Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. In our ongoing series on furniture making for beginners, we're going to talk about drawer dividers. I'm going to show you how to take your drawers to the next level. Stay tuned. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe. Turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. Okay, so let's establish the why first. Why bother going through and doing all this work? And by the way, it, in some cases, it takes as much time to build the interior as it does to do the drawer. But here's typical. Now, I took this out of a cabinet that I just built over from my drill press, and there's what you find. So there's a half a dozen different items in there. They're scattered all over. And of course, when you open the drawer, they all slide forward or back. Take the time to build something like this and everything is sectioned off and you can put in as many compartments as you want. It makes it so much easier. There's two different ways of doing it. I'm going to show you the one I'm going to do. In this one, I've gone through and these main sections have dados cut in them and these pieces were set in. And that's all right if you want to do it that way. But what I prefer to do is where you cut a, you cut a notch in one piece, cut, a notch, an opposite, cut the opposite notch in the other piece, do it properly, and they fit in there perfectly. You don't see the joint line. A few little details that you have to pick up on in order to get it just right. But it's a, it's a great option and well worth spending the time to subdivide these drawers so that they actually become useful you open them up and you know exactly where whatever it is you're looking for is going to be instead of a mess like that. Now what I'm going to do, even though this is shop furniture, I really want this to work more effectively than it has been. So I, I, uh, I've got some really nice old growth Douglas fir, which is what the drawer front is. But I don't know whether I'm going to use that or whether I'm going to use pine. I'm leaning towards using the Douglas fir. It's very stable, straight grained, easy to work, beautiful stuff. I think that's what I'm gonna go with. So our next task is to decide how we're gonna lay this out. We're gonna get maximum use out of it. I'm gonna tell you right now that I don't want the uh, drawer dividers to be as tall as the drawer for the simple reason that it means you gotta reach down in. So if you have a small section, it's hard to get your fingers down in there. Most of the items in here are laying on the bottom anyway, so I don't really need these dividers to be much more than maybe at the most two thirds of the height. So what I'll do is I'll empty this all out on the table, use this space, and then divide it all up so it works great, it works well, and then we'll go in and make a cutting list on how, our, how long our pieces need to be. And the nice thing about having these overlapping joints or this, these notches is that all of the pieces that run this way are going to be the same length and all the pieces that run this way are going to be the same length and you just go in and cut the notch in the right spot. Okay, so, so I took all the contents that were in that drawer and I used a piece of masking tape to draw out the outline of the drawer and I kind of put these in somewhat of a bit of order. Now these strips represent the width of the pieces and you want them to have I don't, want to I don't want to lose a whole lot of room because I've got big wide strips, but I want them to be wide enough that they're substantial by themselves. So these are measuring 5 sixteenths of an inch. So if we go in there, actually we can break that off. Use that one in a different direction. We go in there and lay one like this. Same, another one right here. And then this is going to be the inside wall, or the, in, the back of the actual drawer front, so we don't need one there. And that's going to be the back of the drawer, so we don't need one there. So this will be an easy one to do. And we'll go in. We can move that a little bit. So we can put one right there. Now, I need one over here. That works. I'd like to separate this, but that a little tiny narrow one like that really doesn't do you any good because even with low sides, it's very difficult to reach down in and grab anything. So we'll either put these somewhere else 
or we'll separate. We've got an extra compartment up here. That's what we'll do. So these will come up in here if I don't wreck the whole thing in the process. This is actually, I'm going to, I'm going to take a little block of wood and drill holes, turn these upside down so they'll stand in there and then they don't tip over every time you open and close the drawer. So this is going to be pretty simple. We're going to have a total of four pieces. So four easy joints. We, it's going to be really important. We want those to fit in there perfectly. No slop. And by, you don't want them snug. If you make them too tight and they push the sides out, then that messes up the fit of your drawer. But we want them to actually touch. We don't want them to move around a lot at all. And that'll keep everything in position. Now, I always fit these with the shooting board. So we'll, do, we'll just take an approximate. This is measuring 13 and 13 sixteenths. So I'm going to make these 13 and 7 eighths and then I can adjust it. So we need two 13 and 7 eighths by, I, mean, I guess we determined our height. The inside of the drawer is 2 and 5 eighths. I think if we went, it's pretty, they're pretty big. So it's not we're going to have a hard time getting your hands down in there. So we can go almost to depth. I'm going to suggest we go 2 inches. So 13 and 7 eighths by 2 by 5 sixteenths. And then in this direction, we're 9 and 5 eighths. So I'm going to go 9 and 11 sixteenths. 2, 9, and 11 sixteenths by, okay, this is where, 2 by 5 sixteenths. Here's where we're going to make a change. What we want to do in this case, since we're, we're going to have a half lap, of sorts. One has to be sitting a little bit lower than the other. Now I'm going to show you why. I'm going to grab that. You're up. reaching down in here. You want to make it comfortable. So you do not want sharp edges on any of these pieces. If we, if we cut a chamfer on them, like I've done here, and they're the same height, then you're going to have what looks like a gap where this piece that meets this piece because of the chamfer. So in one direction, they've got to be taller than the other. And this, the opposite piece, or the shorter piece, has to be below where the chamfer stops. So if we're going to make, it really doesn't matter, but let's make the long ones, the ones that are the full width, two inches, and the shorter ones, we'll cut them down. And if we cut, if we cut about a 16th inch chamfer on there, let me just turn this around. We need that to be a little more than a sixteenth lower, but I think we can get away with less than that. Let's, let's make them a sixteenth of an inch lower, and we'll just make a fairly small chamfer, just enough to knock off the sharp corner, but it'll also give us a nice looking joint. So instead of two inches, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go inch and seven eighths, then it doesn't look like a mess. And I'm going to make these out of uh, Douglas fir. Before I go to the table saw to rip them, I want to have one, one edge already finished. That way I can keep the maximum amount of width. Okay, so we've got them planed on five on, on uh, one, two, three, four surfaces. Now we're going to do the ends, and hopefully that's low enough that it'll sit just below the little uh, chamfer that we cut on them. 
So I think what I'll do is I'll cut the long ones first to fit. Now I want them to be, I don't want any slop. I want them to be snug. Um, if we, we can, they, possibly they might be too big. And we'll know that because when we go to put this back in, the drawer is not going to fit and we have to come in and take a little bit off of them. But I definitely don't want them too small. In other words, these sides are not going to come in, are not going to go out any. But if anything, they may come in a little bit when they actually go back into the drawer, if that makes any sense at all. So decide right now where the bottoms are going to be. And I think I'll, make, I'll mark these, the darker part. So when I do this, I'll have the bottom facing me. Cut a little chamfer off the bottom. That's too much. we are. Very. Check the back, but it should be the same. Cut a little chamfer, then flip it back. Now the bottom is against the fence. You've got that little chamfer to protect from tearing out the back side and then check it. I'm gonna leave that, that's close. I'll do the other one the same. Okay, so the two long ones fit, now the short ones. And I think I cut those too long, so what I'm going to do is square up one end first so we have a finished end to work with. I just want to be able to plane past any of the torn grain from the saw. So if I put that in there, and I probably have a fat sixteenth to spare, so rather than plane that off, Nice thing about a bench hook and a fine crosscut saw is I can eliminate that a lot quicker. Okay, so let's lay this out. We're going to do some, hand, some by hand and some by power tool or by table saw. So what we need to do is get these laid out first. So we want to have on this one three and a quarter, three and a quarter, and then whatever is left over. This is going to be my top side. I'm going to notch down into the top side of this. I'm going to go halfway, and then I'll do the corresponding notch on the bottom side of this one. Okay. So three and a quarter. Let's put a pencil mark there for right now. And we're going to go half the distance. So this measures one and a half. We'll go down to the three quarter mark. So I'll come in here. 
Actually, we want to do it this way because we want the bevel on it to be on the inside. This one is going to intersect with this piece. So right about where it's going to go, I'm going to use this. I'll put that back in place. Put the knife in the slot, put that in there. Move this piece into place. make just a light pass. I need some help. Again, we've got our bevel on the inside. Now I think I'll use my marking gauge to help transfer those. Now, the only one I can really use a marking gauge for if I want to keep the bevel on the inside is the distant one. We're going to cut across the top. Okay, now if we do this one, it's going to put our bevel on the wrong side. And it's a bit of a stretch to try to do it from that side. I could use my panel gauge. Make that a little deeper with the knife. Actually, I think I'll use my other marking gauge on this one to get that three-quarter mark. I'll take it right off of the steel rule. We'll end up chiseling the base and having a marking gauge line there is going to make it a lot easier because the chisel will sit right in it.
Okay, we've scored a line all the way around. If we want to get that precise, we can come in with a chisel and just cut a little trough on the waist side up against that line. This is the one you're going to see up on the top. Okay, now we've got to saw that perfectly. Yeah, go. Okay, if we examine that closely, this side came out perfect, didn't go beyond the score line. This side, we left a little bit of material, missed it with the saw, so we've got to go in and we've got to pare that little bit. But I also need to make this just a little bit deeper. Okay, I'm going to use my 17 degree chisel, which is just a regular bench chisel, but it's been a primary bevel of 17 degrees. So on soft woods like this, it, it cuts through particularly nice. Okay, just see what we've got. Our, our uh, knife mark leaves us a little nicely severed mark that makes it easy to come in and follow. This is the one that was actually done quite well on the saw. I really don't need to touch it. Now before we cut this one, let's go in and see if it's going to fit. No, that's a little too tight. If that's the one we actually worked on. Problem is when you plane these, they don't always come out to be have perfectly parallel sides. Okay, I gotta take a little bit more off of that. But I think what I'll do first 
is lay out the other one. Actually, we'll, we'll, do, we'll complete this one with hand tools and then we'll go over to the table saw. You're gonna see it's a whole lot faster, but it's also a lot easier to screw up. So now what we've gotta do is determine where this one needs to be. This is the one that gives us three and a quarter inches. Okay, that's gonna sit right there. And this one is at four and a half, so this is our bottom. This one's gonna be cut on the bottom, so we're gonna come over four and a half inches. And since this is only going to have to go down half the length of this piece, then this one will be three quarter. In other words, we're not going half the thickness of this, just half the thickness of the narrower piece. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our newsletter has subscriber-only content, monthly discount on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. Should have turned that other one around. Easier to cut on this side than it is on the opposite. Now a close look at that. And it seems like the saw cut was right where it needed to be. Nothing left over. And we'll find out when we go to fit it. So these two are gonna to go together like this. Both X's are on the bottom. So this one fits. This one's a bit too tight. Now to determine how much. Uh, more than I would have thought. Let's see which side it is. Should be three and a quarter. Well, that one's right, so we need to take some material off the far side. Now, the easiest way to do that is going to be with the marking gauge. And if I can score a line all the way around, This is going to be tough because that head of the tool is so limited. So if I just go light with multiple passes. I'll get that deep enough, then I can set my chisel in there. Got to make sure I don't get any twist. Now we'll try a pair. Keep lots of downward pressure on the chisel, right in the middle of the chisel, so you're not leaning to one side or the other. Lots of, uh, lots of control. If 
Got a little bit of material left right there in the middle. Much easier if you hit it with the fright the first time with the saw. Okay, so that is going to sit down like that. Yeah, that's it's not as perfect as we would like it. A little bit of excess slop, but that's the difficulty of doing it by hand. Probably get a lot better by the time we did the hundredth one. Okay, next thing we're gonna do with that is just cut a little chamfer, but instead we're gonna go over, we're gonna lay this out and we're gonna do a couple on the table saw using a rip blade. And as long as we can get it right on, it'll be uh, a lot faster. Okay, for this I'm gonna use a rip blade. So the only thing different about a rip blade is the top of the blade is square to the sides. So when you make a saw cut, it gives you a nice square kerf, at least at the bottom. It looks like that. Combination blades and crosscut blades end up giving you those little rabbit ears. Well, I want that to be nice and square on the bottom, so rip blade it is. Now, the other thing you're gonna want is a, uh, at least I think so if you're gonna do it this way, I prefer a sled instead of using a miter gauge. And if you haven't made one of these before, we recently did one, we'll leave you a link below so you can be taught the process. Um, I need to, we need to make that slot three quarters of an inch deep. So thanks to my friend, Sean, who sent me a set of these. I'm gonna take my three quarter inch one, set it on there, raise the blade up to the top of the arc is right there at three quarter. Okay, now, so that we, because we hand plane these, they might not all be the exact same thickness. And I don't want them to be off four or five thou. So what I'm going to do is number them. Okay, that one goes at the bottom. So we'll start off with this one. So we'll make this number one, one. And down here will be two. So that'll correspond with this, which is gonna be two. And then I'm gonna to switch to letters over here, just so I don't mess them up. That's gonna be an A. This is gonna be a B. And this will be an A and a B. I wrote in the bottoms. Okay, so I think I'll start with this one. We're gonna make, we're gonna make these the same in that we're going to be the same distance in from this side as that one is, and likewise with this. And I think we, uh, no, sorry, that wrong. We're gonna use, we're going to have three quarter down to here, and then this, this one will be a little bit smaller. But we gotta do this one first. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that in place. Move this out over till it touches the tooth. Pull that back. And I'll put a, uh, a piece in there and clamp it. And that'll act as my, my stop. And I'll make sure that it's correct. Okay. So that's gonna give me that outside cut. And I'm gonna keep these right. Can't use it on this. So this is gonna be the same, so that's the only one I can use it on. Now, if your blade is nice and sharp, then you should be able to get a nice clean cut without any tear out on the backside. You can put a piece of masking of tape on there if you want to prevent that tear out, or better yet, if you get a piece of eighth inch plywood or something and just clamp that on your fence to give you a zero clearance fence, that'll almost guarantee that you won't have any tear out. But this is a nice sharp blade, I'll go slow, and it should work fine. Now I gotta make sure I turn that so I'm cutting from the right side. So I'm gonna cut down from the top on this and A and A. So that's gonna be done just like this. Now I don't know if this is gonna fit. So I'm gonna take this one and that's, see that's just a little bit loose. 
so I don't want it to be, I don't want to repeat that on this one. So I'll shut that off. Take this out. Take this piece. Do the same thing I did. Move it over till it touches the blade. Uh, then move this back. Now I'm going to use the business card as a spacer. So if I hold this in place, move this over, put that in there, move it back, remove this, move that over. Now that should give me a smaller cut by just the right, the right amount. We'll see. Hopefully we're right. Put that back in place. I always like to keep putting these pieces back where they belong so I don't screw them, mess them up. So I'll cut that. Take out that middle section. Now let's see how this fits. Okay, I could use that uh, just a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is take a piece of paper, put that in place. Uh, let me think this through. We wanna move over the thickness of, no, sorry. I'm gonna put this, in, put this over to here, loosen that, put the piece of paper in. wind doesn't blow it away on me. Move that back over. Lock this in place. Remove that. That will move me, move me over the thickness of the piece of paper. Yeah, that's a little bit snug. I don't think I want to go the full thickness of a piece of paper. Okay, I don't want to go the thickness of a piece of paper. So we'll go through and do this again. We're just going to move it over the width of a shaving. So move that over like that. Take this out. Uh, how are we going to get that in there now? All right, hold that in place. See if we can get this to cooperate. We could have used a feeler gauge, but I figured not everybody's gonna have a feeler gauge, but everybody should have a shaving kicking around. Move that over. Clamp that. Take this out. Move that over. I'm guessing we didn't move that more than a thousand, maybe a, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so that's that's nice fit. Okay, so now so we're done. We're done with that one. So now we can do we can set up and do both of these. And then we've got to do the same thing. We'll make the same marking on this one. And I think that's going to be the same size it is, four and a half. So whatever we do for this, we can do it for these two as well as this one. That'll speed it up.
that fits on this one. And not quite on that one. So I know it's not going to be too wide. We can always increase it. So we'll use this setting as the second cut on both of those, or all three of them actually. This is ready. So the last thing we're going to do <coughs> is cut some chamfers on the tops of these just to make it a little nicer on the hand. Can't go terribly deep. Okay, so that's six passes, and that's probably enough. So I'll just go through and count out six passes on each one. Okay, check our numbers. B, B, that's an A, that's an A. So, set that in place. Okay, now we might have to shorten one or two if we don't fit in there nice. And remember, we don't want it to push the sides out at all. This has to go down at the same time. Now, I'll see if it still fits. Good. Okay, so there's a simple and easy way to get nice dividers. Makes it so much more useful as a as a drawer. I just want that bottom to sit down there nice and tight so nothing slides underneath. There you go. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.